Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. As you all know, I did a review of Chypre Extraordinaire on my channel, which that one is the best vintage French Chypre floral type of fragrance goes. So if you want to experience the pinnacle of Chypre floral fragrance, I would definitely suggest you to check out uh, Chypre Extraordinaire and also make sure you check out my review on that fragrance because I kind of go over the uh, genre Chypre and kind of explain that in detail. Now, after that review, some of my subscribers they asked me to do a review of Diaglyph and I thought today would be a great day to go ahead and do a review of this masterpiece. I haven't smelled this fragrance for a very long time now and smelling this from the bottle just reminds me what an unadulterated decadence Diaglyph is. It's truly another masterpiece from Rajadov collection. Now, uh, there's a very beautiful story behind this, how Rajadov decided to uh, name this Diaglev, and also there's a beautiful hi uh, history behind the name Diaglev as well. And since this fragrance cost $1,000, I thought it definitely deserves for me to go over the story and history of Diaglev before we jump into the course of this fragrance. Now, Diaglev falls under the Chypre spicy fruity category, and it was born about a decade ago. When 2021 comes up, this fragrance will be 11 years old, and I'm so glad that it hasn't been discontinued yet. Now, initially, this fragrance was created for an exhibition on the Belarus's for the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. This perfume pays homage to one of the greatest forces of the 20th century, Sergei Diaglev. Sergei Diaglev was the founder of the legendary Belarusis. He totally rewrote the rules of artistry and was even said to have scented the curtains of the theater so the patrons were enveloped in a burst of fragrance as they were raised at the start of the performance. So imagine you're sitting there in the crowd and right at the beginning of the performance, they're raising the curtains and get hit with the scent. And that kind of shows me what a genius Diaglev was because he knew not only through uh, power of uh, visual he can have an impact on you but also through sense of smell just imagine when you were a kid your grandma or your mom cooked something very special and you get older and you go somewhere and you kind of uh, smell something kind of resembles that and you're like oh my god this totally takes me back to my childhood and it has that very powerful impact on you so that's exactly what Sergei Diaglev was trying to do so when you go somewhere and you kind of uh, smell something that resembles that smell you remember that performance again and that's also the story behind how Rajadov decided to name this fragrance Diaglev. So before I jump into the uh, accords of this fragrance, I thought I'll go ahead and tell you guys that the uh, category of this fragrance doesn't really do uh, justice how this fragrance really smells like, or even the accords. I mean, I can be like a lot of other influencers and go ahead and say, this smells like a guy getting freshly out of the shower. This smells like Pirates of the Caribbean. This smells like chocolate. This smells like citrus. This smells soapy. Uh, a lot of fragrances, they smell kind of like that, you know? So I kind of wanted to really give you guys um, a feeling of how this fragrance smells like. And to do that, I'm sure there's been a time in your life where you came across a fragrance that had that uh, French vintage type of a vibe about it, where you smell, you're like, oh my God, this is old school. Like I can tell that there's an old soul to this fragrance and it has this vintage vibe about it. And that's exactly what you're getting with Diaglev, but with a modern twist. And I thought that would kind of help you guys so you guys don't get shocked when you get this fragrance because a lot of people, uh, especially if they haven't smelled any of Rajadov's work, when they smell his fragrances, they kind of get shocked. And I have to say, his fragrances, they definitely have that vintage type of a vibe about them. So with that being said, now that you know kind of how this fragrance smells like, now we can go ahead and talk about the accords of this fragrance. So let's go ahead and spray this and see what we get. First of all, the sprayer on this is fantastic. I mean, look at this. I hope you guys get this. You see, it's amazing and I'm totally wasting this beauty, but for you guys, I'll do anything. All right, so I can already smell this. Yes, right away, I can tell it's very vintage. It smells fantastic, I love it. So I get hit with this very fruity and sweet type of an accord, and it's followed by this spiciness as well. And even though it's very spicy, it's a very warm, dry, it's soft, uh, it's very sensual and seductive at the same time too. It's definitely very woody. Uh, I can definitely smell the leather in here as well. 
but the fruitiness is very strong and it's also zesty as well. So I know that zestiness comes from the citrus. Uh, and then it has this very uh, beautiful, big balsamic body to it. It's definitely musky. Um, and man, I have to say that oak moss and that amber cord, it's to die for. And that's what it makes the fragrance shibre, that oak moss definitely does that. And it's such a great, beautiful combination, all this stuff that I'm telling you guys. I mean, you definitely have to experience this for yourself. It's beautiful. And uh, also, as I mentioned for thousands of times, it has that vintage powderiness to it as well too. Uh, so, at the beginning, you can tell it's very inviting, it's warm, it's dry, it's sensual, seductive. It's like, come here, smell me, I'm fruity. And the fruitiness has this very uh, dominant peach note to it, but the peach, it's really interesting. It has that vintage uh, vibe to it. The peach is not like some kind of a cheap uh, lotion peach where you get from some uh, body works type of a store. It actually, it's very classy, very sophisticated, very luxurious type of a peach. Uh, it's not teenage -y at all. It's uh, very sophisticated. And, um, so it does have that inviting thing about it, but then as you start smelling, you know there's something dangerous going on in the background. There's this animalicness behind all these notes. The leather and animalicness is right back there, and you know when it dries down, which I already know because I tried this fragrance so many times, that will become even more stronger. So it is a gorgeous fragrance. The accord on the initial spray is beautiful. Again, that amber and the oak moss is truly to die for, especially with that peach note. So that's as far as the accords of the Aglev goes. Now, let's get to the notes of the Aglev, see what we got for the top notes. In the top notes, we have most of our citrus. We have bergamot, we have orange, we got lime, we got lemon, and we have some... Uh, spicy notes like cumin and tarragon. In middle notes, we have jasmine, we got rose, we got black currant, we got heliotrope, we got peach, we got tuberose, we got violet, and we have ylang ylang in the middle notes. So I have to say that the rose, the heliotrope, and the tuberose, they complement each other really well, and they're very strong floral notes. But then interestingly, the jasmine and the violet kind of counterpoint that, and they make the fragrance kind of airy type of a floral thing. So it doesn't become too oriental and too of a strong of a floral note. And then I have to say the peach is very strong, more dominant than any other note in the uh, heart note of this fragrance. And the ylang ylang and the black currant, they back up the peach note to make it sweeter and make it more fruity. So that's as far as the uh, middle notes of the Aglev goes. Now in the base, you have that high quality, smoldering, manly vetiver. You got patchouli, you got vanilla, you got cedar, you got cloves, you got guaiac wood, you got that spicy nutmeg, you got that high quality oak moss, which makes the fragrance chypre, and then you got sandalwood, and then you got that high quality ingredient ambrette, which some people called musk mellow. You got benzoin, you got labdanum, you got leather, you got musk, you got peru balsam, and you have styrax. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you have some synthetic civet as well, uh, which you cannot find it on Raja Parfum website. He did not mention that, but on other websites, I've seen it, so I'm not sure. I definitely have to ask him and get back to you guys in the comment section. Now, let's talk about the performance and longevity of Diaglev. Diaglev, obviously, it's a performer. It's been made for performance. So it's one of those fragrances when you wear it and you walk into a place, it will demand a lot of attention. It's a head turner. Now it has a, a eternal uh, longevity. It lasts for a very long time on my skin. I get easily about 12 to 13 hours or even longer. I mean, seriously, when I even go and take a shower and I come out, I can still smell the Aglev on my skin. So as far as the performance and longevity goes, it will definitely get very high score from me. Now, as far as the uh, projection sillage goes, it's a high concentrated juice. So on the initial spray, uh, the uh, projection is 
huge. Uh, it projects literally about six to seven feet. And then uh, also this Siage is enormous as well. But then after like two hours or so, it gets closer to your bubble and it stays very strong in your bubble for a very long time for about 12 hours like that. So as far as the projection of Siage goes, it will also get a very high score from me as well. Now the compliments part will be very tricky because again, this fragrance has that uh, vintage type of a personality to it. Um, it has that vintage type of a French perfumery uh, vibe to it. It's uh, it's very wise and it has this old school thing going on. So I really like that about it and it's very special, but not a lot of people are fond of it. So I think uh, it's like a 50-50 kind of a deal here. So there's gonna be a lot of people that are going to love it and they probably gonna give you a lot of compliment, especially if you're dressed right and you have the right personality for it, which it's someone that knows what they want. And uh, it's basically a personality of someone that's pretty much like they're like black or white. There's nothing in between. So they know exactly what they want. So that type of personality definitely goes with this. And if you have that, you will definitely get a lot of compliments. And it's a little bit for a mature type of a person, like definitely over 35, someone that has their life together and they uh, enjoy luxurious type of stuff in their life. So it definitely goes with that. And if you have all that stuff going on, you will get a lot of compliments. Again, there's also uh, this part of people that are not to, into this type of smell. They want that uh, mass appealing type of a fragrances that are fresh, you know, like a guy getting freshly out of the shower uh, type of a thing. So they probably won't like this. So because of that, for compliments, I would give it a medium score for that. All right, so let's talk about the versatility. Now, this category is very subjective. I don't know if I should talk about it. Who am I to say where and when to wear your fragrance? But for me, I would say as far as this fragrance goes, especially you guys heard me talking about the notes of this fragrance, I would say this will do a lot better in cooler temperatures. So anything over 90 degrees, uh, the fragrance would become very acidic on your skin. So I would definitely wear this in a cooler type of a temperatures in like fall or winter. Now, uh, as far as where to wear this, again, if you're a boss and you have your own business or if you're going on a very cool uh, night out, like a very high class night event or even like a romantic dinner with your significant other or even a date, uh, I would definitely suggest you to wear this. It would definitely do well. I think actually this will also do well if you have like a meeting and you're a boss, it will definitely has that bossy type of vibe to it as well. So as far as the versatility goes, again, because it's not something that you can wear this everywhere and it, it's kind of specialized, I would definitely give it a medium score as well. Now, as far as the uniqueness goes, we have to talk about the big elephant in the room. Now, some of you guys know that this fragrance is kind of inspired by another fragrance, which actually the nose behind it is Rajadov himself, which is Mitsuko. Now Mitsuko, which is from Guerlain, was uh, originally created by Rajadov, and this one kind of does smell like Mitsuko, but because I have that one, and actually I have the vintage bottle of that one, uh, this one is actually more acidic, and it's more fruity, and it also has that leathery and animalic note even more than Mitsuko. I think Mitsuko is a little bit more powdery than this one, and it's a little bit more old school than this one. This one has a more of a modern twist to it. So uh, again, as far as uniqueness goes, because it's kind of driven or inspired by a different fragrance, uh, I would not give it a high score as far as the uniqueness goes because there's already another fragrance out there that kind of smells like this. And uh, that's it, you guys. That's all I have for uh, Diaglev. If you guys own this fragrance, let me know in the comment section what's your take on this beautiful, gorgeous fragrance. And if you guys don't own it, I would definitely suggest you to get a travel atomizer from Raja Parfum website. I usually have the link right here somewhere on the screen or I will also put it uh, down below in the description make sure to check it out and that's it you guys thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys soon with another video peace and ciao